Hello everybody, this is Strict9 with Strict9 GP and welcome to episode 5 of my Out of the Park Baseball 18 playthrough with the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, a lot has happened since the last episode. Uh, we left off last time just starting the preseason. I went ahead and simmed ahead through spring training. I set my roster, set my pitching staff, and uh, went through the whole uh, the whole season we just finally finished up or went through the whole spring training and some okay so-so news in terms of how we finished up we finished at 14 and 14 after a pretty slow start and overall didn't look too bad had some uh, good performances out of a few pl players that we'll look at here uh, shortly uh, and I know it's not always uh, a good indicator of how your season's going to go when it comes to preseason spring training, but I'd rather be, I'd rather play well in spring training than not. So I'm pretty happy with where we finished up. Um, if you see the rest of the league, the rest of the division for sure, Miami stumbled, had a really rough uh, spring training. Atlanta wasn't as sharp as I thought they'd be. Washington did pretty well, so not sure how that's going to play out. I know that Atlanta took a, a hit. We talked about this last time. They took a hit in, in the offseason, lost a lot of players, so uh, they might be in trouble this year. So hopefully the league is going to be a little bit more competitive or the division is going to be a little bit more competitive. Overall, Cincinnati had a good spring training uh, in the National League. Cleveland... Angels, uh, Rays, Yankees, those are some of the strong teams in, in the American League. In terms of what's happened since I uh, left you, um, I had one trade and uh, was kind of a surprise trade, but I decided to go ahead and go with my rookie, Sean Barge, at second base. Um, he's a guy that I drafted. I know he hasn't been tested. He played a little bit for me last year in September, and he hasn't really looked all that great in some, some of his stops in the minors, but his ratings are just so solid. Uh, very good defense, speed's pretty good. His potential ratings are, are great, uh, both for my scout and OSA. His potential five-star for my scout. And um, I made a trade in the offseason with the starting second baseman from last year. He was a rookie and had a really solid rookie year for me last year. I uh, sent him out there just uh, to see what kind of offers I could get. I shopped him around, and I got a surprising offer from San Francisco, who have, uh, I talked about them last episode as well. They have been really active in the offseason, and they gave me this Mike Lochtfeld who was a pitching prospect, has only played in the majors a little bit last year. His numbers weren't great, but his ratings are very good. Um, good stuff, good movement. Control, not as solid as I'd like to see, but he's got some room to improve there. Um, four, three and a half stars right now from my scout with a four and a half potential, and OSA gives him the same. And usually that stuff rating is a good indicator, to me anyway, of... Uh, Pretty good power pitcher, a lot of strikeouts. Um, he's not, um, he's not there yet. But my scout thinks that he could probably be an ace type pitcher, and that's what I really need. I, I've got good depth overall with pitching, with that pitching staff. But I just I don't have a true solid number one ace on the staff. And if he can't build to that this year, that probably be asking too much. But He's got some potential, and I think he might, two, three years down the road, might be um, a good bet to be a number one starter for me. He's also durable, and I like that about him too. So this is how my pitching staff uh, played out for the for spring training and, and what I'm going through the or starting the season with. It's going to be a little iffy. I really wish, like I said, I really wish I had a, a true number one I've got a couple of three stars here, three and a half, three and a half. But um, I'm hoping that the balance, the the depth of the staff will 
will at least make us competitive, you know, and, and my goal really this year is to at least compete for the, for the wild card. But the problem, the trouble that I've had so far in the spring training is, is it happens a lot. It's just, uh, it's something you can't get away from, but injuries, if there's a theme to this episode, it's going to be that injuries suck and they will stop a team dead. And, um, just looking at uh, who I've lost this spring training and, and even before spring training, I'll talk about that too. But I took some big hits in uh, injuries, uh, starting off with Mike Farr, which was a big surprise. And I've mentioned him in several episodes now. I was really counting on him to be one of my best starters. And not He's not... Uh, to that level of a uh, number one ace, but he has solid ratings. I really expected this to be his year, and he was about two or three weeks from coming off uh, the disabled list. He had an injury late last year that kept him out for, I think it was six months or so. And I got a message from my trainer that he wasn't recovering and that he was going to be out not for another week or two, but for another 15 months. So it's now down to 13 to 14 months. So I've lost him for the year, and I'm going to be without him for the start of next season if I keep him. And that's going to be a big question mark going into the off season. Do I really even offer him arbitration and hope that he comes back to form after injury? So that's going to be um, a big downer for me. Also, Dave Shrimsher, uh was injured for a couple weeks. He's another guy I'm really counting on in my starting rotation this year. He's got one day left, so I'm hoping that he'll be able to come back and be okay. He didn't miss much time. I lost Hector Perez, who's a big guy in my bullpen. I was expecting on him to give me some, some quality innings. I lost my starting catcher, who is about a week from coming back from his injury, so I don't expect that to impact us too much. Um, but still didn't want to see it. The big one, though, no question, Fritis Nova, who I've talked him up quite a bit the last two episodes. He had two solid seasons for me, won the Gold Glove last year, great defender, good range, good power, good speed. He's going to be gone for six to seven months, so I don't know if uh, we're at April right now. He might get to see some time in September if he, if he comes back from the injury okay but I'm gonna to have to be without him for the year and then Royce Lewis I was afraid that you know I, I, I tried to give him some rest in the spring training I only started him like three out of four games but he, he had an injury and that was I think it was overall about a five-week injury and I was really really disappointed in that and I was afraid that that might happen after signing him to that big contract Hopefully he'll be able to come back okay. I'm only going to be uh, another two, three weeks without him, and we're, we're about to start the uh, season. Looking at how my guys did through spring training in terms of their statistics, um, I did think that Mike Lockfield had a solid spring, uh, which was good. Uh, the rest of the starting staff, staff was kind of hit or miss. Uh, rocker who I really need to play well this year I've got him at my as my number one starter I know he's not number one starter quality uh, but he's played he's got more experience than some of these other guys and I didn't really want to put him uh, or put some of these other guys in that uh, starting you know number one slot I felt that you know I don't know how the game measures pressure, but I thought that might be too much pressure for some of my guys. Kevin Gowdy, not a great spring. He needs to really bounce back this year. But uh, I think where my strength's going to be is going to be like from the third to the fifth slot in this rotation. I think the balance is good enough that we'll match up well against some other teams. Espinosa had a good spring, and he's going to be uh, definitely... Uh, in the mix, probably middle rotation. He might be an emergency starter if I need it. Devin Ketchum was a surprise, and I'm going to keep this guy up there. He is a number one draft pick for me from last year. He didn't get a whole lot of playing time, only got up to 
the low uh, short season A league, but he looked very good in his uh, limited play last year. Um, his ratings are really tough. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good pitcher. I don't believe he's going. He's expecting to make the starting rotation. I don't think he's going to do that because he's only got two pitches so far that uh, he needs maybe another pitch or two to before I could think about putting him in the starting rotation. But I think he's going to make a good option out of the bullpen. And he had a pretty decent uh, and limited play, but he had a good, a good spring training. Normally, I'm probably going to send him back to AAA, even though his numbers were pretty good. He... I'm really not a big fan of his personality ratings, and uh, I'd rather have him coming from uh, from AAA if I needed him. Joe Maylock, good potential, but he's just not performed in the majors yet. Uh, last year was a so-so year. I think I'm going to have to send him back one more time to see if he can maybe improve his ratings or show, show me some good numbers in triple A. But I usually like to go with a 12 person staff and I know I've got one guy about to come off uh, of the disabled list in Shremsher, I think. So it looks like two. So I've got 13 pitchers right now. I need to, to get rid of one more. Everybody in in the bullpen looked really good. Castro, not as great, but uh, I like his strikeout numbers, 19 and 17 innings, and that was a pretty big workload for a closer in the spring. Whitney Teslo has not been a great pitcher for me so far, and he regressed a little bit in the offseason in terms of his ratings, uh, so I'm going to send him down to AAA and look for him to come up if I, if I have some injury problems later on in the season. So right now that's going to be my pitching staff going in. You can see Castro, Closer, Alice, Ramos, Neris uh, setting up and then catch him the big surprise uh, middle relief and I'll have um, Espinosa I think is going to be my emergency starting pitcher uh, if that happens to be needed throughout the year. In terms of my lineup I'll go with 13 guys. This is how they looked um, in spring training. The big hole now until some of these guys get back, catcher and third base. I call, called up Cole Staub, who has been back and forth for me for the last several years. Has looked okay at times in the minors, but he's just really... He's not that great of a player. One star from me, one star, or my scout, one star from OSA. I don't expect too much from him, but after Nova went down, I did a quick check of the uh, free agents available, and there's there's really nobody who would make a reliable enough third baseman uh, at this point to, to put some more money into it. Um, the hope now is that Barge, who struggled <laughs> a little bit, as I expected him to, in spring training, if he can hold on to the second base job and get a little better as the year goes on, I can move Adam Oviedo over to third. I know that's kind of a, a gamble for him defensively, but hopefully his overall infield ratings, are, uh, these defensive ratings are good enough that he won't be too bad over there at third. And then when uh, Royce Lewis comes back, I should be okay in the infield for now. And the first baseman, um, I thought Suzarek, who I picked up from Atlanta in that trade, I think he did pretty good. He's going to be my starting first baseman against uh, right-handers. Eli Poe wasn't too bad, but I think, uh, I think I'm going to send him back to AAA. He's never played above AA. Uh, I think he could be a possible mid-season call-up if I have some injuries or definitely a September call-up. But right now, I'm going to let him uh, sit in AAA. And uh, let me see how many guys I got here. 
Actually, I may be able to leave Poe up here until some, uh, until Lewis or, or somebody else comes off to disable this. So that's going to be Smith in a week, Lewis in two to three weeks. But uh, when Smith comes off at catcher, I'm probably going to have uh, one of these catchers to send down more than likely the same because he's, I don't think he's ready yet. And uh, he's still rated highly by, he's still rated highly by uh, OSA. He might be someone who would be a possible trade. Eh, nothing's coming up right there. One guy, potential three stars, but we'll see how it plays out. I, I might need him for depth. So right now, let me... Uh, let me look at another thing that just came through and I pay a lot of attention to playing out these the series is the player development update and I haven't got a chance to look at this overall it looks like uh, Ramos, Alas, I'm glad that Alas, uh, he had some some positive movement, Jorge Moa uh, looked good so I probably I think right now I'm keeping him up. Yeah, I am. So, looks like he's improving a little bit. Devin Ketchum, he was, he had just such an amazing jump um, in ratings in one year. Uh, my scout is a control rating improved potential. Just about every rating improved. Mike Farr is already going down, so that could be a sign of his injury. Espinosa. Miguel Castro is now four star. He was a five star reliever when I picked him up. Hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully that doesn't continue. Uh, Eli Poe did go down. He was looking even better going into spring training. Nova's looking pretty down. Um, Vargas is starting to improve. He's up to one and a half stars overall. Still four star potential. He's going to be my primary back up in the outfield so I need him to to really be productive for me uh, I've seen too much here uh, Aidan Sclafani who's uh, currently in at Clearwater which is my high A team his overall ratings aren't that great but he just had a big boost in his individual ratings so we'll see how that works out he was a 13th round pick and he's looked really good in the rookie level and the um, short season A League last year he's put up some good numbers so he might be a sleeper for me anybody else here Pat Dowdy um, another big second baseman that I signed and I'm hoping that he develops the way he's uh, started out and matches his potential he's got a potential contact rating of 18 which would be uh, insane I can imagine that that kind of rating in this play through the, the way I've got the settings that's going to be about a you know 300 perennial 300 330 hitter even and that's what he did last year at short season A he hit 334 um, but looks like his ratings dropped from my last scouting report hopefully hopefully that's not a trend Mike Martin he improved Juan Herrera is another guy who I drafted pretty high second round pick but my scout doesn't like him as much as OSA. In Cameron, Tennessee, I drafted him almost for the name, but he's uh, he's not really shown much promise so far. So one of the things that I'm going to be looking at now as we go up to opening day, we're going to take a look at the preseason predictions, and then I'm going to take a look at that waiver wire. Uh, this is a great time to usually pick up some good last-minute pickups off that waiver wire. You'll be surprised sometimes what you can find on that first day of the season because it's a lot of you know a lot of decisions like I just had to make. You have got uh, teams who have people who are just on the fence and they don't have room for them on the team, so they have to send them to uh, the minors, but they first have to go through that waiver process. Um, looking at the 
personal message from owner David Montgomery, season expectations. He's being pretty generous this year. Um, he's expecting to achieve a winning season, um, but he is worried with my performance. And uh, I don't blame him. I hope I can make him happy this year, or this could be my last year. Uh, I'm really, I was a little bit more hopeful and positive going into spring training, but those injuries have kind of made me a little bit nervous. I also like looking at the prospect list. We don't have anybody on the top 10, and that's, it's really rare that I have someone who shows up on this top 10. But I like looking uh, on the reports and info, the minor league system rankings. I like keeping tabs on where we are, and this is kind of what I aim for, top 10. And this is the highest I've been in a while. And I think, I feel that that's a pretty good reflection of where we are. We have some good players, I think, in the system. Uh, and Lockfield, who I just got from San Francisco, is 17th overall, so that's pretty cool. Vargas, Moya. The, the problem is, or it might not be a problem, but four of these five guys are currently on my major league roster, so this will probably be their last year to be a, a top prospect, and they're going to have to produce this year, I think. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on them. I hope, they, I hope they're okay with that. Um, Ray Hecker, I guess that's how you say that name. It's kind of a weird name. Um, he looked really good his first uh, two seasons at the rookie league level, and he's still 23. He's about to turn 23. He's currently at the low A. This needs to be a good year for him, although, man, his – his uh, OSA ratings are through the roof. I'm just going to do a quick shop around for him because uh, I'm still loaded at second. And and there's such a discrepancy there. Like I said before, I, I trust my scout typically more than I trust OSA. I, I do like to compare the two. And I think if I try to find a happy medium. Um, yeah, I mean, I could trade him for another prospect, perhaps. Um, like, here's a good catching prospect, looks like. Well, my scout doesn't think so. But I'll give him some more time in, in our system and see if he develops. Uh, you never can tell. Barge may, may have some struggles. Hmm, he's not a bad first baseman option, but... Uh, I'll give him some more time. Hopefully he can have a good chance, season at Lakewood this year. And um, if not, Hecker might be an option to move later. For, you know, if I need some need somebody after uh, around the uh, trading deadline, I might think about shopping him around again. So let's look at the preseason predictions. I would be surprised if we're too high on the on the leaderboard here uh, but they're predicting the Yankees to have a good year Detroit to win the Central I don't know if Detroit has been in that position for a while in this playthrough Houston again they're still dominant they just had a very good run in this sim some guys they're expecting to be good Justin Bellinger um, that wouldn't be too much of a surprise he's still rated very highly he's having a great career uh, some of those other guys I don't well, Kyle Tucker, they expect to have a good year. McKay. Uh, Pitching-wise, Selway for Kansas City has been very good. He's got some outstanding ratings. And this is kind of what I mean when I when I talk about the ace that I'm missing. This guy is blue all through here. Stuff is, is awesome. Maxed out, really, on, on several ratings. He's five-star. My scout and uh, OSA, he's won the Cy Young three three years. Um, he's an awesome pitcher. That's the kind of pitcher I would love to develop. It's not necessarily the pitcher I'd want to sign, but I would love to develop this kind of a pitcher. And it's probably the hardest thing to do in this game. There's so many things that have to come together. Uh, you have to have a good high pick for one thing. Selway was a uh, number two overall pick. So you're going to have to struggle for a few years, usually, to get um, 
a pick that high. And I would rather be competitive. And I always fall into that trap, you know, where you're, you know, you're falling somewhere around 80 wins or so. And it's tough to get those high draft picks. And that's what it takes to develop sometimes uh, a number one pitcher, an ace like that, unless you just get really lucky. Sanchez, Sixto Sanchez, who I noticed uh, in the news this week, he is one of the top prospects now. Uh, he's on that top 100 prospect list that MLB just came out with. He was someone that I hated to let go, but he's still having a good career, and they're predicting him to do well. And he's with um, Detroit, so that might be uh, one of the reasons they're predicting Detroit to finish high. And look at this. Philadelphia, 87 and 75. That would be very nice. Um, that would be enough in this prediction. That would be enough to make the wild card. So that would be sweet if we could manage that. Uh, Milwaukee, they're expecting to have a good year. And San Francisco, they're expecting all those moves that they made to to play out pretty good too. 94 wins, 68 losses. In terms of uh, some of the guys here, Guerrero, who has been consistently good in this league so Mount, Mount Trout they're still thinking he's going to have a good year he's one home run I think yeah one home run shy of 500 um, and he signed through 28 so this is his last year under contract unless they extend it I don't see that they've extended it so he could put up some some good numbers still for his career he might have a, an outside shot at 3,000 hits. He's already crossed the 100 wins above replacement for his career. And they, they expect he's going to have another good year. And a couple of Phillies on this list. Surprisingly, Ailman, um, who's currently, he's currently day-to-day, uh, -day, but he's not on the DL. I'm probably going to have to baby him at the start of the season. I may sit him a couple days when I start simming through the season. His ratings are not that great. But I've said before in a previous episode, he had a really good productive year for me last year. And he's got great power, good contact. Um, so I know it's just a prediction. These don't always play out, but it's good to see somebody on there. Also, Juan Ochoa, they're expecting to have a comeback year. Um, and I would love to see that too. He's in his free agent year. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to do some thinking about what I'm going to do with him before the end of the year. Um, Depends on what he wants. I'd like to keep him, honestly. I don't have any pitchers showing up on this list, and I don't really see anyone. Aaron Nola, they're expecting him to have a good year. Um, he would need to bounce back, I think, from some injury problems he may have had the last couple of years. Uh, but overall, I would take that if that's where we <laughs> if that's where we finished, 87 and 75. Last thing I want to do in this episode, the waiver wire. And, wow, I'm not seeing much there. I was hoping to maybe pick up a, a better option at third base than what I have right now with, with Fritas Nova going. Ryan McKenna, he can play the outfield first base, but I'm not really, he's wrecked as well. I don't really need that. Uh He's not too bad of an option in the outfield, uh, although he's maybe a little bit injury prone. Darren Baker. Hmm. It's kind of weird. He, he can play second, not very good at third, but he's got a few outfield ratings there. And I don't see anything that will fit so this has been, you know, this year has been really kind of a downer for me in two, two things, Rule 5 and the waiver wire going into the season. I usually, uh, hey, AJ Fox there, I usually have um, good luck right here to start the season. I'll usually find a reliever that's maybe a four-star reliever that somebody has to give up. And uh, I almost always find somebody who, turns out to be a starter for me for the for the year same with the rule five draft it's i didn't pick anybody up last year on, on the rule five draft and that's rare for me uh, so i'm i'm gonna have to go with what i have 
and hopefully these guys will come back from injury soon. So right now, Shremsher is already ready to be back, so I'll put him back and uh, put him back on the starting lineup. Uh, he'll probably, I think he'll probably fit in. Uh, he'll replace Rhea in the in the rotation, but I think I'll probably have him either third or fifth, or third or fourth. Sorry, in the uh, in the rotation with Coriolan being last and Rhea. He's going to stay up, but one of these guys is probably going to have to go back, and it might be Moa or Moya. The rest of the the rest of the guys looked uh, looked pretty solid. So that's what I'm looking at as we start this season. We're at opening day. Um, I may play through a month or so uh, offline, and then we'll come back and might play a few play out a few games. I didn't want to get to the simming part of it too much. I know that can drag a little bit. Hopefully this is not dragging either, but um, I know so I, I was on the forums and somebody mentioned how uh, out of the park baseball, it, it might be a tough one to, to, um, to pull off in terms of playthrough. So I hope you, I really hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing and you're getting some pointers or some strategy tips or you're seeing new screens that you don't, really use or uh, new reports you don't really use or haven't used before. Hopefully you get something from it. Um, I really enjoy this game and I'm enjoying the, doing these playthroughs so I hope to continue with it and get better with it. Um, if you have any feedback please leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you want to keep up with the channel please subscribe that would help me out. If, uh, if you have any questions about anything really that I'm that I'm doing here in the playthrough like any of the settings I use any of the players that are in the league I've mentioned that before if there's we're in 2028 now if there are any players you want to see if they stuck around through the last 11 seasons that we've been doing this now into the 12th one let me know just drop a line in the comments but I uh, appreciate you watching and hope to see you in episode 6